Many of you have heard recently about the fusion breakthroughs of companies like Helion, Commonwealth Fusion, and TAE. Now, you're hearing in the media about these particular fusion companies because they're the ones that are backed by billionaires, and the ones that are backed by billionaires are the ones that are getting the coverage in the mass media. But when you think of, about it, billionaires don't always pick the winners in a technology field. For example, here's a list of the billionaires who invested in Theranos, the fraudulent biohealth company. Tim Draper, Larry Ellison, the Walton family, Rupert Murdoch, the DeVos family, Cox Enterprises, Carlos Slim, the Oppenheimer family, you know, the diamond people, Riley Bechtel. Similar lists can be made for those who invested in the Madoff scheme or more recently in FTX. Now, none of our competitors in fusion are fraudulent companies, but these lists do indicate that billionaires are not always able to pick the winners in a field. So who is really ahead in the fusion race? Well, right now, all of us in fusion are aiming to get to net energy, to the point at which we have more energy out of a device than we put into it. It's also a measure called Q total or wall plug efficiency. Now, you may have heard about NIF's achievement last year. That's the National Ignition Facility, the big laser in California. What they achieved was to get more energy out of a plasma, the little intensely hot bit of gas that they're heating, than they put into that little tiny pellet. But that's very different than getting more energy out of the entire machine than they put into it. They didn't come cl close to that. So in that race, which private fusion company is closest to the goal? Well, the answer is us, LTP Fusion. We're the one who have gotten the most energy out of the machine per unit energy in. Now the volume of these cubes is an indication of how much fusion energy we get out of a device compared with the amount of energy put in. And our cube is obviously the biggest one. The next biggest, which is 100 times less volume, is a small company called Mifty. And the other cube, which is a million times smaller than ours, is TAE. Now, these are the only companies that have reported fusion results using the same fuel as we are, deuterium. So that's an even comparison with the same fuel. Another company, HB11, has been using the fuel that we're aiming for, PB11, which is a much more reactive fuel. And their cube would be about the size of Mifti's, but again, they're using a far more reactive fuel. Companies you've heard a lot about, like Helion and Commonwealth Fusion, are not in this comparison because they have published no fusion yield results. Now, the race isn't anywhere near over, and none of us is very near to getting to that goal. But right now, these are the three leading companies. How does the race among private fusion firms compare with the giant government fusion efforts? With just $10 million in funding, LPP Fusion's results are only 30% behind the deuterium results of giant government projects like JET and NIF that have spent $4 billion and $20 billion, respectively. Now, the best results of the government projects have been obtained with a different fuel, a deuterium-tritium mix. Tritium is the radioactive isotope of hydrogen. With this fuel, the best fusion in output for NIF 
has been 1% of the energy input, 1,500 times better than the record of 0.0006% with deuterium. This shows the difference fuel can make. We at LPP Fusion expect our yields to increase a great deal when we switch to our final fuel, which is PB11, which we expect to do later this year. But in the meantime, the summary is, the race is far from over, we all have a ways to go. But right now, the company that is leading the private fusion race is LPP Fusion. If you want to learn more, pre please visit our websites in the description. And if you want to help us move faster on the fastest path to fusion energy, consider investing.